This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hi, welcome to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Polikin, and with me today are my good friends, Pedro Burke. Hello. And Kate Abbott. How do. And today, Kate and Pedro are going to lead our discussion because they got to talking about all of the alternative things that people use for dog training commands. Like, we're near the Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton, and a lot of times the Marines will use at ease or parade rest or... The corpsmen who are Navy will use hit the deck or something like that. Those are pretty common in our area, not necessarily in all communities, but if you're near a military base, it is. But there's lots and lots of other things, too. Harry Potter commands. I mean, that just amazes me. And years ago, we had someone in class. I'm a Star Trek fan, if you can't tell by my dog's names, Bones and (laughs) Seven and Riker and Bashir. We had someone who taught his dog use in Klingon commands, which to me is alert. <laughs> just <laughs> crazy because my throat doesn't work that well. <laughs> but let's talk about some of the others. We, uh, being close to the border, and actually we do get rescues brought over from the border. Um, the border being Mexico. Mexico. Sometimes I will approach a dog and ask them, siéntate, or levante, or something, and to see if they've ever had previous training whether in English or something else. Just and every now and then I get a dog who kind of goes, oh, you, you speak, speak my, my language. language. <laughs> well, Liz and I had that a number of years ago. Were you with us then when we had the standard poodle? Oh, right. That came in from China. Oh, right. Lordy. He was part, she was a, he was in a circus. A very, very well-changed nice. standard poodle. And he knew Chinese Hundreds commands. of commands. In yeah. Chinese. And the poor new owner was like, I don't know all of them. <laughs> And you could see the dog was so confused. <laughs> he was an adult. He'd mm-hmm. been in the circus for quite a while. And, and that's the point. They were retiring they him. They were retiring yeah. him and placing him, and a rescue brought him in. He wasn't a dog food dog or something like that. He was being very placed. Very nice dog. Very, very nice dog. But you could <laughs> see him looking so confused. What time is the show? Yeah. <laughs> when do I go on stage? And what are all these noises you're saying to me? Yeah. <laughs> you're asking me to do that, but that's not the name of it. <laughs> and the she, equivalent of retiring at 70 and moving to a foreign country. I mean, that's yeah. what happened to the dog. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. I just felt so bad for his confusion because he was an incredibly well-trained dog. Mm-hmm. But he did pick up. Yes, mm-hmm. he, he did. Picked up he, fast. he was bright enough that he went... Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he did he did good. Yeah. But that was just yeah, that was just kinda of But there's unusual. there's a lot of Spanish speaking people in our neighborhoods too, so Spanish yeah. is common. Mm-hmm. As one student said, my dog is bilingual. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, dog and English, what else? And they laughed and said in the Spanish. So it's trilingual. Okay, good. Right. Except the owner is only bilingual. <laughs> yeah, right. There we go. I mean I'm not good in Spanish. Yeah, I'm not bad. But just I mean Basic, what, siéntate for sit. Was it vamos? Let's go. Vamos. Vamos. There's little little things. Was it muy buen? Muy buen? For, sí. Muy bueno. Yeah. For praise. Good job. Yeah. Nice. Whatever. Oh, yeah. What the, I can't pronounce that. <laughs> oh, Lord. What is that? Is it caro malo? Bad dog? Perro malo. See? Perro malo. You have to live. So malo being Spanish. bad, perro being dog. <laughs> Dame la pata. Give me your paw. Shake. Oh, we've heard this many a times. Silencio. Oh, yeah, we have. That's, <laughs> that's probably the most common one. Yeah. No problem with that. No comas. Don't eat that or leave it. Yeah, I like that. When you're traveling in Latin America, you'll hear this almost everywhere while you are walking around. Instead of saying, saying shoo in Latin America, you'll say sale, sale, out of here. Get out of here. Sale. Exit. Get out of here. <laughs> My dog just left the room. <laughs> Fine, I'm out of here. Some some countries in Latin America also use fuera. Fuera. Get out. That's cool. I'll be like, shoot, get out, take off. <laughs> See, I've been wanting to have a list of these. Yeah. Um, now you've got your 
list. Okay. Arriba. But I'm just making a mess out of that language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you've got the advantages in German. <laughs> yeah. Charo. Charo is lay down. Ven. Come. Or here. Aquí. Or you can put them together. Ven aquí. Come here. She's having way too much fun with that. She's having way too much fun with that. A lot of fun. Rapido. Yeah, and I like that our, our students that come up with their own unique words. Yeah. Not a language, a specific language, just little, like, different, like the one I recently found out, which I never knew, I guess I've never heard them say it, but they've been through our classes so many times with so many dogs that they use for the command release. We say, okay, well done, whatever. They're, they use surfs up. Surfs up. Surfs up. <laughs> That's so <laughs> California. <laughs> He, and he surfs. That's part of what he loves to do. That's his up. break time. Yeah. 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 It works every, it's awesome. That one, we had a French bulldog. And they used what? Ale? Ale. For a release. I remember that. that and they used cute. brief retreat cheese. No, no, no. Sometimes <laughs> other things. As long as they didn't put champagne in the dog's water bowl. You know, well, some of the other ones. Down. This is some recent ones. Was uh, <laughs> one of our students used get dirty. <laughs> that was just. <laughs> that did. I that, got, they got a double take for me on that one. What'd yeah, you say? That can have a couple different <laughs> meanings. <laughs> get dirty, the dog just laid down. What? Yep. Or hit the deck. Hit the deck. We are, yeah. Oh, and the cum. Didn't you have a private student? It was a very nice man. With the German Shepherd. German, no, Golden Retriever. Sorry, Golden Retriever. Happy, the lucky dog. And the man had a very deep voice. And he was saying... I know you keep telling me to call come in a happy voice, and I have tried through the years. I really have tried. I just can't say come happy. So one day I was watching cartoons with my son, and I realized I could say something happy. So when I call my dog, I go, yabba dabba doo! <laughs> and his dog came flying from across the training center to say <laughs> his feet. The tone of voice. It doesn't matter what he says. It's the tone of voice. And he went back to going, good dog, sit. But that's his yabba dabba do. And he says, I can even say it in public now and not blush. <laughs> now, see, what he needed to do was take one more as praise, like, Wilma! Yeah. That would have been cute. That would be named cute. his dog, Barney. Huh? <laughs> Well, Barney wasn't usually said in a good tone of voice, but Wilma was usually higher pitched. Yeah. <laughs> Not that I watch the Flintstones. <laughs> mm-hmm. I grew up on them. <laughs> That's why you didn't want your nickname to be Betty. No, yeah, well, could be. <laughs> could be. Yeah. I don't think it was related, but, but yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, and then one recent one is cute for the sit. She used peaches. Yeah. And why? I, I didn't but, get an explanation on that. Did she explain it to you? No. Except that I thought she renamed her dog. <laughs> I heard her say it, and I went up to her, and I said, did you just rename your dog? And she looks at me confused, and I'm looking at her confused, and she goes, but what did I just say? I said, you said peaches. Is that? A, did you re- rename her peaches? She goes, no. That's my command for sit. Peaches. Now, peaches is urban slang for a butt. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, well, then that's what it is. Then yes. Yeah. Guess- Put your butt on the ground butt sort the ground. of thing? Well, she's got good peaches. <laughs> Well, there you go. Peaches. It's, it's urban slang. Okay. That's Why she do got it you from. know that? I, never I don't want to know. Never the, mind. The star of Bridgerton was being interviewed on the Graham Norton show, and Graham Norton was talking about all the sex scenes in Bridgerton. Graham said, well, you had to do a family warning, right? And the star said, well, there's a family WhatsApp app. And it was posted on there, but not everybody got it. And some family members said they saw too much of my peaches, <laughs> and they offered to rate my peaches. <laughs> Would you give him five stars? Oh, oh I'd give him more than more that. More than that. Okay. <laughs> He's the definite ten. <laughs> Lied. I had my peaches. You asked. <laughs> It's your new oh, anyway. okay. <laughs> See all these things I'm learning while you guys are teaching class. God. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. <sighs> so I know those are just a few that our students are using. I know previous ones, they did, um, and I don't know, it was a Native American language. I'm not sure what tribe. I, I know I 
it was just so unusual, the words. Every command we taught, he had a specific word, which is, I probably couldn't even pronounce it. I remember and I him, remember. but I don't remember what language it was. you remember his dog? Uh, it was quite a while ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. I just remember him saying these words, and I went up to him and I'm like, what? Well, who are you using? You know, what, what are you saying? Mm-hmm. And I, he, he mentioned the tribe of... I asked him if it was Lakota, languages. because that's in my ancestry. Yeah, and it wasn't Lakota. And it wasn't Lakota. No. It wasn't a common one. It was a, a it very was, unusual. I think it was a Pacific Northwest something. tribe. Yeah. But I don't remember. No, but that was uh, very interesting. We had a gentleman a number of years ago who owned an Italian restaurant. Oh, my gosh. Here in San Diego, North now, County. Now, he didn't use... The equivalent Italian translations. No, he used dishes <laughs> yes, yeah, that were served in his restaurant. You know, spaghetti, lasagna, that type of thing. And I just to wonder how he figured out which dish went which. Maybe went lasagna, with which lay, L, lasagna, <laughs> sit, S, spaghetti. Did you ever ask him? No. No, no I, I was did. too hungry. <laughs> I did want to ask how he kept them straight, and he made a vocabulary list. Uh. And everybody in the family got a copy of the vocabulary list, and he posted it on, of course, the refrigerator. But, yeah, during class, he'd be calling out dishes as we went through exercises. Yeah, and Petra and I would leave the yard going, oh, my God, I'm starving. (laughs) What did he use for a release word, do you remember? Check, please. Check, please. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I don't remember that. But he was... I hate to say he was typical, but if you pictured an Italian restaurant owner who would do something like that, that was him. Mm. He was jovial. He was yeah. funny. Yeah. He made us laugh every class. Oh and, of course, every class we're going, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was, the dog doesn't care what the word is. It's no. what you teach the meaning of. Mm-hmm. And so he used Italian dishes. Mm-hmm. It's the lady that she uh, she was from uh, from the Netherlands. She trained in Dutch. She just came through once, and she was pleasant, and it was no big oh, deal. Oh yeah, but, yeah. We had a guy she that came through a couple of classes with the Czechoslovakian Shepherd, and he spoke Czech to the dog. See, yeah. I can understand if you speak the language of the origin of the breed. It makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. But every decade or so, <laughs> I swear. Somebody will come up to me and say, do you have a list of the words in German? I have a German shepherd, and they would learn it easier if I used his language. <laughs> right? I kind of giggle. I that. swear to you. I, I know. I mean, I had German shepherds, too, and I'm half German, but I never thought about using German. And then he would we, learn faster. <laughs> would, yeah. It's his native tongue. <laughs> and then we had the guy with... The German Shepherd, and we've seen it in several of the protection breeds, including Roddy's, where I'm going to teach it in German, and that way I'm the one that can give the dog Nobody's commands. ever heard plots before. And, yes. and the bad guys don't know German. I had to tell him about the news report of the police dog, I think it was in L.A., but north of us, who was trained in German commands. And the bad guy knew German, and as the dog was in mid-chase after the bad guy, the bad guy turned around in a very authoritative voice. What is down? Plots? Plots. Plots! In a very authoritative (laughs) voice, and the dog went down and waited for the police officer to catch up. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So, no, (laughs) teaching him in German, what do you think the bad guy's going to expect that you... Teach your protection dog. They're not going to expect lasagna, that's for sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I think mean, that's awesome. <laughs> Great. All right, well, let's take a break for one of our sponsors. Take a listen, we'll be right back. Sit, stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. So, what's your reaction, Kate, when you hear Ben & Jerry's now has dog treats? Now I won't have to share my ice cream with them anymore. (laughs) Because, you know, when anybody comes near me when I'm eating my Ben & Jerry's, they're likely to get growled at. (laughs) 
No, I think it's a cool idea. I've sometimes made my dogs frozen treats or gotten some that are commercially available. But considering how much I love Ben and Jerry's, it's about time my puppy dogs got to enjoy that as well. I know my ultimate favorite one is the uh, Cherry Garcia. Oh. oh my gosh. Yeah, I'll growl if anybody comes near me while I'm eating that. Um, I'm a chunky monkey freak. Yeah, <laughs> like that that way. But so also, I love peanut butter. And did you know that one of the new dog flavors is Ponch? It has peanut butter and pretzels. Ooh. And Rosie has pumpkin and mini cookies. That That's M-I-N-I. I'm sure it has lots of cookies too, but they're <laughs> little small cookies in there. Mini cookies and pumpkin. Which I do give my boy pumpkin in his dinner, so this would actually be a nicer way for him to get it. Yeah. So I think I would qualify mine in the freezer is my ice cream. And then I have to label my the dog's version of Ben & Jerry's as the frozen treat. Doggy dessert. And one way you can tell is instead of the black and white cow on the front of the little container, it's a black and white dog. Oh my God, that's for so the cute. dog treat. So, so cute. yeah, you can tell which one is which because it's <laughs> their dog frozen treats are are not designed for humans. Made with human quality ingredients, but not designed for humans. So you do want to keep them separate. And I can only give my boy a little bit, if I dare, of my own ice cream my Ben and Jerry's ice cream because yeah it doesn't always set well with him but now he has his own he's gonna have his own all right so go out there buy some for your furry little friend there and then enjoy together enjoy let's talk pets let's talk pets on pet life radio pet life radio pet life radio dot com we know you're begging for more so back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back. So I just finished a, graduated a tricks class, and two of the students, maybe three, anyway, they were saying they were going to use Harry Potter commands yes. for tricks. Which I think, as a fan, I think is absolutely cool. Yeah, I think they would do that for the tricks two that they were talking about. Yeah. You yeah. just have to remember how to pronounce them. Yeah, that's a thing. And I'm <laughs> probably going to screw this up. I do like Occhio for come to me. Uh-huh. And uh, Crucio for howling, you know, speak. Okay. Crucio. Confoundo instead of spin in a circle. Okay. Confoundo, I like that. I want to know if they teach the dog to levitate. Levitate. Leviosa. Leviosa. <laughs> <laughs> that could be jump. Yeah. yeah. No, somebody did that. It was walk on their back legs. Oh, okay. 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 Yes. Um, that works. I find this interesting. Aguamente. You're out, you're telling, you're commanding the dog to make water. So it's <laughs> a way to go pot. Yeah. It's, <laughs> use the bathroom. <laughs> Aguamente. Be careful. Be careful turning on the Harry Potter movies in the living room. Oh <laughs> Your dog starts doing all these tricks every time they hear the command, the word. That would be so, so that's funny. One of my infamous memories, using, uh, it'd be, basically when we're teaching our dogs commands, we're teaching them code. Many years ago, when I was doing protection dog training, a gentleman came with a Great Dane, and he wanted his dog trained to attack when he said, Pepper! And I looked at him and I said, and someday you're going to ask somebody to pass the salt and pepper. <laughs> That's not going to end well. And, yeah, exactly. And he was going, blah, 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 blah. you're not going to train him the way I want him. I said, no. And he left. <laughs> and I didn't care. I, I just, when we, when we started on that basis, I knew we were not going to go anywhere together. Yeah. Pepper. 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 He wanted to be subtle about it. And I'm like, no, that's way too subtle. Did you um, want some pepper on your salad? Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. Dog attacks. There goes, there goes the waiter. <laughs> especially <laughs> especially right day, right flying day. through the air. Boom. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, that's probably part of it, too. I didn't really like the dog, even just on first meetings. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. So be oh, careful oh. what commands you want to use. And we've had more than one deaf dog come through. Yes. Oh, yes. American Sign Language. Yes. yes. For commands. Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. It's recently our uh, American Bulldog. So and she did. I didn't see her her last couple of classes, but I saw her first basic class. And she worked hard with that dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And not, not even beyond just the obedience signal, hand signals. Well. Yeah. 
He she was a rescue that. American bulldog mm-hmm. who I assume his first owners didn't know he was deaf because he had some behavior issues. Yeah. Yeah, no, she she stuck with it. Yeah, and then I think there's some signals that even she's made up on her own. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of times you have a leash on your left hand, you need to have one hand available to do these hand signals. So you mm-hmm. just, you know. Well, Tamara, Crazy. our friend and used to train with us, she taught and worked in American Sign Language. Mm-hmm. So her dogs were bilingual, right. verbal, right. and American Sign Language. I don't know if she still does it, but she did do that. Back when I was... a uh... In an agility club, there was a woman with a deaf Sheltie. And when she came out to run the course with her dog, I swear, the whole the whole field just stopped and watched. She would pretty much stand kind of in the middle and just use... It looked like interpretive dance as she was telling that dog what obstacle to take next and in which direction. And, oh, very cool. And him checking in with her and then happily running and being a Sheltie, barking the whole time. But he was deaf. He didn't care. And... <laughs> didn't hear himself. <laughs> he didn't hear himself. But he was so darn happy. Yeah. And it was invisible strings between the two of them. And it was magic. That's yeah. awesome. Just beautiful. Yeah. That's very good. So good. all the ways the dogs communicate with each other and they learn our language too. That's amazing. Whatever language we choose well, to whatever use. Whatever language we use. <laughs> very, yeah, there's many. There's specific to certain things like carding. Mm-hmm. So we were talking with someone who's just starting carding with her dog and what commands to use for carding. Right, right. And Frank, I can never <laughs> remember which is key and which is ha, so I just use left and I right. Love, yeah, I use left and right. But she it, knew she it just from comes horses, out. so she wanted to use it. Oh, well, good. Like, Fine, as long as you can remember it, good. Yeah, even with the, oh, because they just finished the Iditarod. And uh, I remember they were talking to the guy who won, and, and they had asked him, what are some of the commands you use? And it was Guy and Ha, with some of them, and all. Remember we had, a few years ago, I think it, we were at the Animal Keeper at that time, still training there. Somebody asked us how many commands Shasta and Ursa oh, yeah. knew. Mm. Yeah. Shasta was good. yours, Ursa yeah. was mine. And it basically came down to every activity that we participated in or trained in yeah. had a vocabulary. Yeah, it did. So they worked in front of our class doing the demos. Mm-hmm. So they knew commands unique to being a demo mm-hmm. as well as the class commands. Mm-hmm. If we said, you know, forward dog heel, they knew what that was. They could go do that without us. <laughs> and then therapy dog work. You know, instead of saying stand, stay in front of somebody, we taught go say hi. Right. So it sound, didn't sound like they were being forced to visit. Agility has its own commands. Search and rescue had its own commands. Trick training. Trick training. Mm-hmm. And I think I with that like point with Ursa, I think I listed about 250 different unique Right. Commands. And some overlapped. The obedience overlapped with the carding and the obedience overlapped with the therapy dog and so sure. forth and so on. And Ursa and Shasta, we did mm-hmm. herding instinct tests. We mm-hmm. did some herding. Mm-hmm. You know, all those different things. Not, and that's not on top of words you use at home. Right. right. Again, there's a whole, yeah, there's a lot of different words you use at home that you don't use. Go find days. your spot, go, which means go to your bed, mm-hmm. get out from underfoot, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> don't you chase that cat. <laughs> uh-huh. Unique situation phrases. Yeah. I, I, I think Ursa had class. about 250 commands. Yeah, easily. And That's I'm telling easy. people in class, I don't care what word you use for release, say, example. Right. But it can't be the same sound word phrase. For two different things. Mm-hmm. Other than that, yeah, come up with 250. Just keep trying mm-hmm. to go. <laughs> yeah, well, luckily for me anyway, when I was would be teaching a specific sport, when I was in the teaching stage, usually I was only teaching one sport at a time. Mm. So then not only am I teaching the dog, but I'm putting that in my brain muscle memory that, okay, when we go to do this, these are the words you use. And then you teach another sport, and okay, these are the words you use for that sport. Mm-hmm. So there's there's some overlap, but the meaning would be the same if they overlapped. Yeah. You know, go lay down would mean the same in therapy dog as it would in search and rescue or something like that. 
Because I love to sneak up on people, and, and I'd love to sneak up. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> that really sounded bad. I know, but I, I will just quietly walk up next to them in basic beginning class. If while I hear them while say, we're practicing in classes. Yes. If I hear Not them say... Not in public. Say, you don't right, sneak up right. on people in public. <laughs> and go, boo! Yeah. Um, I cut you! Uh, but I'll come up to someone who's learning, and if I, especially if I hear them saying, sit down, sit down. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sneak up next to them and say, so which do you want your dog to do? What? What did you just say? <laughs> Sit down. Oh, okay. Mine, before I retired, was we tell them not to repeat the command over and over and over again That's without him. helping the dog. So mine was sneak up behind them and hear them going, sit, 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 sit. And I'd go, one, two, yep. three, four. That's five cents. Uh, how long is it going to take before you help her do it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we still warn them, too. They still get a warning. Yeah. And then they get caught. Yeah. <laughs> but off, get off the couch, and or get down off. Get down off the couch, or get down, don't jump on me, and then put your belly on the floor. They're just, they can't be the same sound. Yeah. 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 And it happens a lot. I mean, in my house, you know, like my aunt. I think dogs are, if they're on like her, where she sits on her couch and they're up there, she tells them to get down and they go, okay. <laughs> they lay down. And then on she's the like, couch. No, get down. I'm like, Rosie, they are. They are getting down. They're yeah. down. Mom did that one time. We were on an RV trip and your mom had gone over to your house. I guess Rosie was busy or something. And oh, what was it the dogs wouldn't ago. do? They wouldn't go out the door. They would go outside. Oh, they wouldn't go outside, right. They learn to wait, yeah. Because she didn't say the right words. <laughs> yeah. The dogs magic were magic just word. waiting there. <laughs> say the magic word. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't please. No. <laughs> All right. Well, we had way too much fun with that. I guess the best idea that we can give you is feel free to teach some unique commands if you want. Have fun with it. If you're a Harry Potter fan, do that. If you're a fan of something else, do that. But make them unique. Have fun with it. And Keep a list. Of and, and, and teach away. everybody what the vocabulary is. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that lasagna? No, that was supposed to be spaghetti. <laughs> oh, All right. That's it from us. <laughs> Bye-bye. Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand only on PetLifeRadio.com.